How's it going guys? This is Lou from Coffee House and today we have a really exciting new product announcement slash review of the Mocha Master KM5. Yes, it's true, Mocha Master has released a new coffee grinder to pair so greatly with their Mocha Master brewers, which obviously have been mostly unchanged for the last 50 years, but exceptional in their function. Mocha Master so graciously sent us the actual unit here to keep and enjoy and everything like that. So full disclosure, we did get this for free. However, I plan to remain as neutral as possible with this. There are things that I do not like about this that we're going to talk about. So this is no fluff piece about the KM5. First things first is the actual price here, 339 US dollars, which finds itself right in the ecosystem of similar new coffee grinders. Think of something like the Fellow O Gen 2 that also is just for brewed coffee. Yes, it's true, this is just for brewed coffee, but I think it makes a lot of sense since Mocha Master doesn't really involve themselves with espresso in any kind of particular format. Inside of the actual grinder is two 50 millimeter horizontally flat burrs and they actually produce a very, very consistent grind. It's a stepless adjustment knob ranging from what they call one being a like a fine aero press and nine being an actual coarse cold brew, you know how they call it. And I like that it's stepless. I think it creates a nice division between this and something like the Fellow Ode, which is a stepped grinder. The KM5 is going to come in this polished silver kind of nice color, uh, also matte white and matte black. The matte black, they said, is going to be a couple months behind the actual initial release, which is what they're calling early April. March 1st, today, is the first day we're allowed to talk about this, and we will be accepting pre-orders for this, as will Mocha Master and everything like that. But we are going to go through this, and I'm going to talk about it so you know, we can understand what we're actually going to be selling rather than just being like, hey, new product, you know, buy this. What we're going to do in the video is just kind of go top down here, talk about all of the different materials, talk about all the familiarities, the things I like, the things I don't like, and then I'll wrap it up, give you my final thoughts. Another thing to note about the actual Mocha Master grinder here is it is hand built in the Netherlands and protected by its five year warranty, just as the actual brewers are. In terms of synchronicity, these two match up very well, which leads me into one thing I think this is going to really have going for it, and that's the look. I think the synchronicity between this and the actual brewers themselves is gonna have a lot of people, non-specialty enthusiasts too, buying this for the look. I mean, it just works so well with the actual Mocha Master, so I think they nailed it with the design. Let's go ahead and jump into kind of a top-down look on this, and then we'll get into the specifics. Okay, first things first is the actual uh, lid here, which is very reminiscent to the water lid on the actual brewer itself, as is the hopper here. And one thing that I don't think they intended on doing, but I actually like a lot, is if you flip it upside down, you can actually push on it and create a little bit of a bellows uh, since it's so tightly machined. And I don't know if you're seeing it in here, but we can push out any of the retained static, which is really, really nice. Next, we actually have the hopper here, which is a 100 gram hopper. And I think it's good. It's not glass or anything like that. It's the same material as the actual water reservoir on the brewer, which I think from a synchronicity standpoint is really, really awesome. Next, we have a finely knurled metal adjustments knob here on the corner. It has a really, really great deal of resistance and it doesn't feel loose or anything like that. I like it a lot. Next, we have a plastic top and a plastic chute here. Inside of the chute, they did claim that they have anti-static technology, but in my kind of criticisms down the road, we'll talk a little bit about the static. Next, we have the actual shroud here, the, the base of the actual grinder, which is definitely the same material as the actual Mocha Master itself. I would imagine that they're gonna use the same color, the same treatments, and the same metal for this, especially since they're produced in the same factory. And then we actually have the actual grounds canister here, which is glass, and it actually feels really nice and premium, with a soft rubber lid, which I do like, but it does collect a good bit of static on there. They also have some markings on here, which they say on their website is for personal reference, which I appreciate, you know, they understand that every coffee is different. So this really doesn't make all too much sense to put like grams or weight or volume or anything like that. This slides right into place here with a interesting kind of snap here, the way that this is done, it's not a magnet or any type of detent or anything. It seems like a little bit of a ramp and it tends to work pretty well, but sometimes I've had a little bit of difficulty getting that perfectly in there. Last thing here is the actual switch here, which is also really the same as the other uh, Mocha Master switches. Just go ahead, turn that on. But as you can see, that torque on that grinder is, uh, is quite strong on this, which we'll get into a little bit down the road. 
All right, let's talk about some things that I love about this grinder. I mean, first off is the uniformity. This so clearly fits within the ecosystem of the Mocha Master lineup. And having this next to your Mocha Master is what's really, really going to drive their sales for this. Not only did they make a good grinder, but they made something that made sense for their ecosystem. So I think even though you're spending around 700 bucks for a Mocha Master Brewer and this, I think this in the home setup world is gonna be everywhere. You're gonna see these in specialty coffee enthusiasts' homes, but also non-enthusiasts' homes, which is a really, really untouched category for most people who have just kind of had these random little blade grinders or something like that. Another thing I love about this is actually how sturdy it feels. It is very, very heavy, and you can tell that the motor in there is just solid metal. It's really nice and feels a lot more hefty and sturdy than some other grinders in this price point, which I really, really enjoy. Another thing I love about the actual Mocha Master KM5 here is the grinds adjustment knob. One, obviously it's stepless, which I think is really cool, especially if you're really finely tuning coffee. But another thing is that you find yourselves in the middle of the actual grinds adjustment knob, somewhere between five, six, seven, for adjusting for brewed coffee, which is really nice because if you wanna go one way or the other, you're not left with maybe one more number to go coarser or one more number to go finer. You actually have a decent range. There are other grinders like the Fellow Ode Gen 1, which you had to find yourself at one or two to be able to actually grind for filter coffee, which obviously left you with no more room to go on that side, and you had like seven other useless digits to go through. This, on the other hand, you have a great deal of variance between each direction, which I think is really nice. Now let's go ahead and talk about some things that I don't like about this. First things first is the actual hopper. I don't think it's steep enough the way that the coffee feeds into the actual burrs. Uh, the fact that it's not too steep allows some ground spits to get kicked back out and sit on the inside of the lip there. So they're not actually gonna go in there which will play into what you would consider your retention to be. Another thing is there's an exposed screw on the inside of the actual hopper and beans tend to get caught there which I think is a little funny but it just kind of hangs out and you have to kind of shake the grinder, which is, you know, it is what it is. But um, it's just a nice little like funny touch that I think people will tend to comment about because it is something that happened maybe every other time when I was grinding or every third time or so. One thing that I did notice when I was brewing coffee and grinding coffee is that there is still a good deal of static buildup. Mocha Master said on their actual website that there is static technology involved in the shoot to help with buildup, but you still do see a good deal of static buildup on the inside of this glass canister. If you use something like RDT, that will obviously help very, very much so, but it is something to look out for. One thing that I like that other grinders don't have is they do have this kind of like rubber seal here, which is going to prevent static you know, and chaff going everywhere, which is half the battle for sure. And then another thing that I think might even be a deal breaker for some people is the actual switch here. This is a very familiar Mocha Master switch, but something that I found that was particularly interesting, and maybe this will change, is the fact that this switch actually has you hold it. So if you let go of the switch, this is going to stop grinding. While some people I think may like that, if you're running around in the morning and doing things, I don't know if a lot of people will have the 30 seconds to stand here and hold that switch. I think it might be cumbersome to some people who have this in their lineup. That said, I think that's a pretty easy switch on the manufacturing side. I don't think this has them completely changing the grinder or anything like that. And maybe it'll be something that we can actually modify in the future quite easily. I mean, it is just a switch. A big question many people will obviously ask is, what is the retention like on this? You know, I'm $200 away from a niche zero, which has a very, very low retention. What does this do for me? And I'm happy to announce that it's actually very, very good. I know obviously the more and more you start playing with angles and everything, the more opportunities you have for retained grounds. But this, in my experience, you get about 0.3 grams or so retained in the actual burr set, which obviously if you pull the lid off and do your little reverse accidental bellows trick, you might be able to get everything out. But from what I've seen, about 0.3, which is really, really nice. Another great thing I like about this grinder is the actual serviceability. The inside of the hopper here, as I mentioned the screw, um, we can just take that one screw out and the whole hopper will lift out. Then we just have two little clips where we can pop open the actual shroud that covers the burr set. And there's the burrs. With three other screws, we're able to take out the 50 millimeter burr set, which I think is really, really nice. There are other grinders that are much easier to get into, but there are also grinders that are much harder to get into. I think this found itself kind of in the right middle ground there. 
Having the burrs accessible by just one Phillips screw, I think is an appropriate amount of work that you need to use to get into the burr set. So I really have no complaints there. Another thing I actually like about this grinder a lot is the power that the actual motor has. You can really, really feel the type of torque that this thing produces. In comparison, there are other grinders in this $300 price point where you put something in there like a really dense Ethiopia or something and you're like, I don't know if this is going to fully make it through. And there are other grinders that don't actually make it through, which this has no problem about. One thing you want to be mindful of is I actually lost one of these little rubber feet on the bottom. So when I turn this on, the torque kind of goes crazy. So it's just something you're going to want to think of is the torque is really strong on this and it's going to do a little bit of shifting if you don't have those feet. So it's something to think about when you actually purchase one of these. Obviously there are a lot of positives with this grinder and I think the biggest one is the fact that this synchronizes so well with the Mocha Master Brewer and I think that's what Mocha Master has going for it. This all leads me to the question of like, who is this really for? And I think there's a great, great spot in this for the specialty community because I think it perfectly matches up with the fellow O Gen 2, which so many people love so much. I think the difference is that this looks the part of the fellow Ode. I've always seen the fellow Ode and the Mocha Master next to each other as having kind of two different polarizing design aesthetics. So to find something that does what the Ode does, but looks the part of somebody with a Mocha Master on their counter, I think this is going to change a lot of people's minds. Ultimately, there's a whole second type of consumer that I think this is for outside of the specialty coffee world. And those are the people who look for something that just works. You're gonna go ahead, you're gonna turn this on, and it's gonna work not only for a year or two, but five, 10, 15, 20 years. This is the type of grinder where you're gonna be able to turn it on and you get what you expect every single time. Having something that meets your expectations in terms of quality, variability control, and consistency, I think is the most important aspect of a coffee grinder. And to have something like this, no frills, just an on-off switch, you put your coffee in, you get it out, it goes into your Mocha Master. I think the workflow and the design of this just makes so much utilitarian sense when paired with the actual Mocha Master. I think Mocha Master hit a absolute home run by releasing a grinder that is held up to par with the actual Mocha Master Brewer, which has been so good for the last 50 years or so, nearly unchanged. This introduces specialty coffee and an increased level of quality to coffee drinkers who aren't just in the specialty coffee market, but people who are outside of it, you know, willing to spend the money to actually get there. And despite the small little drawbacks, this is a huge win for Mocha Master. And I think this will be a very, very important grinder in terms of staying power. It's got all the right things. It's got everything that the specialty market asked for, but in a package that works so well with the actual timeless design of the Mocha Master Brewer itself. Ultimately, I love this thing. I think it works so well with the Mocha Master ecosystem. And I think many people outside of the specialty market will also be adopting this into their own kitchens, countertops, offices, all that good stuff. Like I said, the Mocha Master KM5 is available for pre-order right now and will be released in April. That's when we'll start shipping them out. They'll come in this silver, the white, and the matte black, which is a couple months down the road, but you will be able to order them very, very soon. Again, I appreciate Mocha Master for sending this and I appreciate you for tuning in and watching this review. I um, really, really enjoy the fact that this exists and I'm very excited to see Mocha Master putting a little bit more time into the specialty coffee world and adopting specialty coffee narratives. That's everything I have for you. Please leave a comment down below and make sure to shop this on our website. We do have free shipping, which is always awesome. I'm Luke from Coffee House. Thank you for tuning in again and we'll see you next time. With a uh, plastic actual, hold on. <laughs> Come on in, you're fine now. <laughs> We're reviewing a grinder. Oh, you are? Yeah, uh-huh.